There's not one guy, one person in the history of this program that's bigger than the program. What's better than this? Guys being dudes. Oh, what's up? Welcome into episode number 94 of the Program Guys podcast. My name is Mason Prince. Joined with you as always by Ryan Tyson, Mark Hall, Nat Gann, Patrick Kurtzberger. Today is Thursday, October 26th. Be sure to like, subscribe on our YouTube channel. Try and do hit 2,000 subscribers, folks. Trying to hit 2,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. Cost you how many dollars, Mr. Pumpkin? Zero. Zero dollars. <laughs> Zero dollars, Mr. Pumpkin says. <laughs> if you're watching our YouTube channel, you would get that. So watch on our okay. YouTube channel. It's free to you. Free to the people. That's how we do it, folks. Check that out. Uh, Program Guys Podcast. Also, you can check us out on all of our social media at Program Guys with a Z, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, all that stuff. ProgramGuys.com as well. Gentlemen, how we doing? It's all five. I don't remember the last We're time back. that we had all we five back. boys we back, back in the back in the saddle. I thought it was like two weeks ago. Was it it might have been. But you know, when <laughs> when you don't get to see all of your best friends in a two week time, Ryan. It feels like forever. I I, I feel that, man. I Do I you? apologize for being gone last week. You know. Do you apologize? Feel that? Do you? I feel do. That? Okay. I do, man. All right. I miss all right. You. Hey, okay. Hey, whatever you say. <laughs> this is a five sum. Yeah. That I feel passion second to none with. <laughs> you know. It, it's second to none. Electric. The tension is palpable. You know, you can cut it with a knife. It's like Look. butter. And, and we got uh, we got some uh, we got some Jayhawk stuff to cover today. Oklahoma taking on the Kansas Jayhawks. So and, when excited. This, and when this five some <laughs> when this five some gets talk talking about how we're gonna grip down on that bean, I Here tell you go. what, it, it gets we begin. All, it's all <laughs> ready. It's, it's crazy. It's already started. Two minutes so in. Excited. Hey, don't don't worry about it, Patrick. How you doing on the West Coast, man? Best coast. Good man, excited for Halloween weekend. Excited for the weekend in general. We're, we got a good matchup against Kansas. Going to celebrate Halloween. Going to go to a spooky bash or three. Wow, three. Well, hold Whoa. on. There's only one. Yeah, bash. hold on. There's, there's, there's only, only one. one. There's only one. Matt, let if the people start branding something in California. The spooky Matt. bash, Patrick. We, man, we're sending be... a cease and desist. Oh, Matt, let the people know fair. what spooky bash is. Let the people know what spooky bash is. Yeah, spooky bash is something that oh, we I... started back in college, deliberately for the boys and for the people of this group. It can only be done once. It only be done by this guy right here who hosts every single year. And we always have best costume awards. And <laughs> man, we've had some good costumes the last few years. And we've always had Maverick. a damn good rowdy time. Fair. Well, I'm not saying it's... me specifically, but Maverick. some other people are more creative. There's only one spooky bash. That's me. Call it that's that, right. right. Oh, it's it's completely true. There was uh there have been attempts to try and recreate uh, the energy of the bash. For example, uh, we threw a toga party once in college and wow. had a particularly oh, stop, rowdy stop time gosh, gosh. at that <laughs> event. So, you know, you can, you can, for example, Matt can get rowdier at some events, but yeah. as a totality, you can't come close to the bash. Mm. It's just, we, it is what it is, man. It's no. number one. The toga was pretty great, right, Matt? What do you think? How do we get from A to B? How do we get? No, from hey, they we're talking parties. Things. We're talking parties, oh, right? Yes, we're talking man. parties. You said man. it was the exclusively is... you hosting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, you a, said that's it's something you host. None, and I agreed. I just, we've tried before, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you would agree that was a rowdy time, right? Yeah. It was more than enough. Let's just say that. Let's that's keep correct. it where it needs. If you're in the back. dark. Okay. If you're watching our YouTube channel, Matt Gann's got his Program Guys t shirt on. If you got a Program Guys t shirt, you ordered one, should be. In your possession. If you got one, send us a pic on social media. We love seeing all those. I have it on good authority that there were boots on the ground, program guys and gals wearing their shirts at the game in Norman on Saturday. Shout out to you people who were Hell wearing yeah. those shirts out there in public. We appreciate that more than you know. All right, boys. Guess we should get right into the, the nitty well, gritty of it. Go ahead. Let me get, I knew me, it's always me and Ryan something. were here. Oh yeah, I'd love to give my well. Recap no, that's on, what I meant. On the game, we're, that's what he was going to start gotcha, with. We're getting Gann. the nitty you... gritty of the show. <laughs> gotcha, so, gotcha, 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 gotcha. So Answer, myself, man, you know myself, Mark, and Patrick were there for the post game. Ryan, Matt, were not. 
want to get you guys' thoughts on the Oklahoma win over UCF, 31-29. to Matt Gann, we'll start with you since you Ooh. seem so excited to jump in. I am, baby. So I was the only program guy at the game this weekend. And what I'll tell you, perfect football condition, but I think you guys, the post-game pod boys, hit on some really good topics. The one thing I wanted to hit on was the defense, I think, played – a heck of a game other than about two to three maybe broken plays I think I saw a statistic if we took out those two three plays that accounted for over 33 percent of UCF's total yards yes were they able to get down the field but when stops had to be mattered we kept UCF to four of 16 on third down what more do you want a defense to do getting stop after stop of course they're going to give up some plays if your offense can't get it going and the offense just sputtered and had no rhythm the entire game. We were putting wide receivers like Gavin Sott or Gavin Freeman in the backfield too often. And the offense just could not get a steady rhythm during the game. And there was at one point where I felt heading into the fourth quarter that this was going to be the same old story that the OU team last year faced. A one possession game. We couldn't execute. We couldn't find a way back. And this team is built different overcame some really good adversity and the offense needed to do what it needed to do. I think it was a lot closer of a game than most people anticipated, but these are the kinds of games that you have to win if they're going to be close and you have to be able to execute down the stretch, which is exactly what the offense did in the fourth quarter and the defense continue to step up. So these are the types of games that you want to see OU win, even if it's a tough one at home, but they're going to get everyone's best shot every single week. So you're glad to see it and not the same thing unfold as we saw last year's team. Brian Tyson. Hey, real fast, Matt, vibes question. How was the stadium? I think it was mostly deflating, mostly deflating, I think, because the offense couldn't get it going, and we could have easily (laughs) – yeah, I think the vibes were good going into the stadium the first quarter, obviously the big win over Texas, the bye week and all that. But after the offense just started sputtering and couldn't get the run game going for until the fourth quarter, I mean, I think everyone in the stadium felt like, oh, gosh, it's happening again. This is what we're doing, similar to last year, obviously, until the fourth quarter happened and then the big two-point conversion stop. But that's how OU fans are. We have the highest expectations, right? They're always going to be having excellence and wanting to beat teams by 30 to 40 points, especially since we were the better team, at least defensively, overall so from my perspective deflating until the fourth quarter we were we actually execute on offense <clears throat> ryan yeah so um my feelings are pretty consistent with mason your tiktok after the game um that it was pretty ugly but a win's a win we are seven zero i i i gotta be happy about that i can't there are a lot of bones to pick here um i thought the defense overall played pretty well other than um a couple blown plays um matt Matt just explained that much better than i ever could with his statistics um but the offense the thing that i worry about the most is i think this game in particular with our offense showed every other team on our schedule how to beat us and that is to take away our run game and if you take away our run game everything seems to fall apart And even we have talked a lot about the run game this year and how it's just been good enough for the first three quarters last last week. It was not good enough. It was terrible. And and that to me is like, okay, if you take away that element, all of a sudden um, DG becomes not as accurate because he gets more pressure. They drop pack people um, because like they know the run isn't going to go anywhere. You take away a, a complete like the half of the offense. And it's just not acceptable. And I think we saw in the fourth quarter, Sawchuck actually start to get going. So hopefully that continues in the next game. Um, but that was disappointing. Um, and, and I hope that's something that they focused on over the past week because it scares me going into some of these other games because I don't think UCF is the most talented team that we have left on our schedule. Patrick, any rebuttal? little bit yeah UCF had a really good secondary hopefully as Brent Venables mentioned in his press conference Gavin Freeman does break out I think that's who he kind of is looking for to break out but and again with Tywee Walker being back this week 
I'm very optimistic the run game won't be an issue this this upcoming Saturday. Mark, anything else? Disagree, Patrick. Hold, hold. I large. just wouldn't go to. <clears throat> I wouldn't go to very confident. Well, but, I love that. You know, Sawchuck looked <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Sawchuck did look better on that last drive. I'm not one to put all of the stock in one last drive because I don't think he looked very effective ahead, like before that. Yeah. But Tommy Walker back is it, good. And like, who would have thought last year at any point in time we'd have ever said with what we saw from Javante and then Gavin at the end of the year that we would be looking forward and saying, oh man, thank goodness Tawi's back. But that, that's kind of what I'm thinking just from what Matt said there. For sure. Let us know down below in the comments if you have anything else to add while you're watching along with us. We read every single one of your comments. Thank you so much for commenting when you, whenever you do. Okay, boys, some OU football news. We'll get to it before we get to the uh, OUKU game in Lawrence. Oklahoma coach Brent Venables picks up a bonus that will be at least $25,000 as OU gets their seventh win of the season by beating UCF. He gets this amount if OU plays in a non-college football playoff bowl game with at least seven wins. So more money for Brent Venables. I'm sure he's hurting for it, you know. So I'm uh, I'm glad. I'm glad that he got it. That was a joke. Um, I I love our coach. I love I love that he gets paid. I'm not. There's no sour grapes here. I'm just like. $25,000 to that guy is probably like, it's not even that big of a deal. I don't know. He's earned it. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly. my take, period. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, nice. Anybody else? Anything on uh, on that little tidbit of news? Kind of a slow news week, really. Honestly, it's just kind of getting geared up for Kansas. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's been it's been kind of slow all week. So, I mean, Mark, go ahead. Oh, okay. just the only things that I you can really point to are on the recruiting front, I think. And yeah. that's mm-hmm. all of the crystal balls coming in for Reggie Powers. That has continued. It seems like every day there's someone new suggesting that we talked about that last week, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we did we a little did. bit. Yeah, um, I think that we did. If we didn't, I think we, we did. Of course, I think we did. did. You yeah, know, yeah, I think that we did. Um, he's a safety from somewhere and he was a Michigan state commit decommitted and then visited an Oklahoma game not long ago. Everyone's been throwing crystal balls in for him to commit to Oklahoma. So it's, it seems like a matter of if not when, and uh, then on the news front today, actually, uh, Danny Saley, I, I don't know if that's actually his last name, but, um, yeah, Danny Saley, from Hutchinson Community College, he was a JUCO commit to Oklahoma. Tweeted today, uh, after some unfortunate events, I'll be decommitting from the University of Oklahoma. And then, you know, since he's open to opportunities, here's here's my thing. Is that unfortunate event um, a phone call from David Hicks? I don't know. Could it be? Could be. It's imploding in College Station. And uh, we've heard whispers forever that, like, hey, the players aren't happy. Like, forever, this season, I guess. The players aren't happy, and there's going to be an exodus. Could this be the year that that exodus happens, and could that be why there's no longer a spot for Danny Saley on the roster? Everyone put on your tinfoil hats. Yeah, join us. Join me on the join me on the ride. Yeah, Patrick, what do you the, think? What do you love, think? I, I love I'm not the even theory. Starting with you. I, I absolutely <laughs> love the theory. I, yeah. I still think we get David Hicks. I still think we get Williams Winery. The, the the foil is on my head right I now. Yeah. Terry Buss is on his way. Um, what? what? I love it, dude. <laughs> <Sorry>. no, keep <laughs> it rolling. However, what are you at? What are you at now? You're at four or five we've, stars. We've that also aren't here discussed. Yet? We've also discussed that we have enough NIL and the money to uh <laughs> to give a guy a scholarship, essentially like pseudo scholarship with NIL money. So if we really wanted this guy, I feel like we wouldn't have given him a call and said, hey, we don't have a spot for you anymore because there's always room. But it is a good theory. My my foil hat is on, baby. I love it. Ryan, what do you think? <laughs> I'm still laughing at Patrick's. <laughs> like, Dude, I, rattling off five stars like they're cats. It's amazing. He's like, we're going to get all of them. Yeah. You know, just <laughs> Thanos on collecting the, the Infinity Gems. <laughs> on the listen back. 
listen for my involuntary squeal when Patrick <laughs> says Terry Bussy. <laughs> because I can't help it. That one just took me by surprise. I love it. Uh, I, I don't know, man. We've talked about David Hicks for a really long time. And I still, just because things are imploding at A&M does not mean that they still don't have the money that they do. And I, I don't know. I mean, if he's sitting there getting paid, just absolutely paid, why would you leave? I don't, I don't know. And maybe he thinks that they can turn around in a couple of years. I'm not sure. I don't know, man. There's a lot of rumors out there. There's a lot of things going around. All I can say is this, this 2024 recruiting class has been stacked and we're also bringing in like, are we going to bring in like 30 people? Maybe even more than that. Like eventually it's going to be huge. Yeah. I heard Josh McQuiston say that. Like that's a, that's a lot. Like do we like, and we have the scholarships for that. I don't know. This is more just like real time. No, no, that's right. Because right. it includes it includes guys it includes, like Ace Hodges. Got it. And, got it. Got it. Okay. You know some of the other homies. Got it. So like I I don't know, man. I don't know. Anything's possible in today's day. And I age. love it. That's a possible. So, Mason. Anything's possible. Well, yeah. I'm I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking at what on three has OU 2024 class as of right now. Uh, currently 11th nationally, seventh in the SEC. So that's interesting. You know, still. Still some room to grow here the in the league this. we're entering. Yeah, I know. It's it's just crazy. But you know, four stars, the only five star on there is David Stone. Yeah, obviously you'd you'd like to add more five stars, but also here's where I'm at. So Georgia and Alabama obviously are going to get top, top, top tier talent coming out of high school. But I'm confident in the fact and what OU has shown in their ability to develop these kids who, and I'm not saying they're not good, but like these four-star kids who come in, get some work in, and they get game reps early on in their career. Like we talked about on Saturday, important game reps. I feel like that's there's something to be said about that, and that can also be a recruiting pitch to some people. To Ryan's point about the money being thrown around, I'd love to know that dollar amount because what is that dollar amount that you could be like, oh, you could be like, oh, we can fill this for you, but we can also guarantee you that you're going to get invaluable experience your freshman year to get you well on your way to becoming a professional athlete. Where at this point, I don't know if Texas A&M can because they don't even know who their head coach is going to be next year. I'm Jimbo Fisher's getting fired. I'm telling you right now. That dude, that dude, that dude's not here. He's gonna wa- he's gonna walk away ninety million dollars richer. Right. Mm-hmm. I I agree, but Texas A and M will pay it. Mark, you were shaking your head. Oh, I just think that Texas A and M does have like a recent history of putting defensive linemen in the NFL, and that that part can't be like just brushed aside. But yeah, if Jimbo's gone, and I, he's got to be, one would think uh, all bets are off, right? Because now it's a new figurehead that is calling the shots and is trying to sell you on staying at A&M, even with the money, it's a different situation now. And you got to be sold on that versus, Hey, I had a great relationship with Todd Bates and I made a good bit of money the last two years, one year, whatever it is. Maybe I do make the move. So So here's why. So here's why I push back a little with that. So Texas A&M, as you said, has has the record track record of getting some defensive line guys in the NFL. And I'm I, I agree. Obviously we all saw what Miles Garrett did on Sunday. Miles Garrett was on the Kevin Sumlin staff. He's a product of that staff. Yeah. Am, am no, I incorrect? Sure. So that I guess that's where I go to. Who's the defensive line recruit that Bradley they can Chubb. point to? Huh? Bradley Chubb. Bradley Chubb? Okay. Yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah. Number one pick. Yeah. It's fair. Or enough. they just bring in Mike Elko, who is been one of the people who has is the reason why a lot of AM defensive players are in the NFL. They bring yeah. him back and he's a great coach for them in the SEC. Because he's done a great job at Duke. He's done a great job at Duke. I don't know enough about his like how active a role does he take in recruiting? Because he'd have to be the guy. Yeah. Well maybe we should save it for the roundup, baby. Let's get let's get yeah. to the game. Okay. So here we go. 
Oklahoma against Kansas. Anyone remember OU's AP rank off the top of their head? Is it still six? Six. Six. Yeah. Thank believe. you. Yeah, six. I believe so. Number one in our heart. Number one in our heart. Exactly. Oklahoma heading to Lawrence against the mighty fighting Jayhawks. They are in what place in the conference? They're, they uh, they start Jayhawks. off hot. Yeah. They're two and two. So, two and two. Yeah. So I don't know where that puts them. Probably like halfway. Uh, yeah. But uh, probably like literally like tied for second. Yeah. <laughs> this conference is yeah. ridiculous. So uh, here's here's where we'll start with the OU defense against the KU offense to get started. Okay, boys. So Kansas mm-hmm. currently third in the Big 12 in total offense or in total points. God, I keep doing this every freaking week. It starts on scoring and it ruins it. Okay. Kansas seventh, seventh in the Big 12 in total offense at 443.1 yards per game. So a lot of that you can attribute to Jalen Daniels, who's a fantastic quarterback, but guess what? He's not playing on Saturday, according to head coach Lance Leipold. Brandon Bean will be the starting Jason. quarterback. Jason, Jason Bean. Bean. God freaking Jason. dang it. I don't care. Cool so goes Brandon. He's going to lose yeah. regardless. Brandon doesn't matter. BB. 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 Yeah, BB. So. Yeah, BB. So that should we just call good? him. Should we just call him Brandon for the pod? Brandon, just like roll with it. It's yeah, who cares? <laughs> what, I wouldn't want to mess with that bean yet. So let's just keep it. It's like the Gus Malzahn that. rumors we try to start last. You can't week, just you know? flick it away, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, you can't. Can't just flick that it's, first it's name. Still going to be there on Saturday. Yeah, one hundred percent. No matter how so, much you flick the bean, one hundred percent. So that's that's what the OU defense is looking at. Any opening thoughts before we dive into this, real quick, Patrick? Anything on the uh, stick out to you, brother? Yeah, two weeks ago, they put up 400 yards on the ground against UCF, and last week they put 400 yards in the air against Oklahoma State. That's a weird thing to deal with from a defensive perspective, game planning going into this game. Like, who does that, right? That's just the complete opposite here from a week-to-week perspective. I think the defense is going to be prepared to uh, defend both sides, the run game and the pass game. I don't think we struggle too much, Jason Bean. I do think he is a guy who we need to respect. They have a good running back as well. Devin Neal. But yeah. Yeah. Overall, not too concerned though. I don't think I don't see them doing 400 yards in the air or on the ground against Oklahoma. So I think if you're physical at the point of attack, you take away their run game, which in turn can stall their offense a little bit. So I think this is a very big game for the defensive line once again. I feel like it's a big game for them every single week, but I mean, it's a plus. it's a big a plus. yeah yeah it's a it's a big it's a big week for them as well as that linebacking core. We saw Jaron Canick flying around last week. Danny Sussman continues to fly around, so those linebackers are going to have to be important as well. If you stop the run game, that that's kind of their offense, man. They average like two hundred thirty yards through the air a game, and that's a, that's an average. So like you can if you force them to just become a drop back team and rely on Brandon Bean. Brandon Bean to to just sit back there and try to pick you apart. I'll take that game. What I won't take is we're getting gashed for five yards of carry and it's five yards in a cloud of dust. And you look up and we, and Oklahoma offense has only had like three possessions and it's halftime. Like that's, that's not something I really want to deal with. So that's, that's what you are going to have to do. You got to get off the field on third down. You gotta stay consistent on third down. You're good against UCF, like we brought up. Keep that up. Stay consistent on third down, getting off the field. It's so so important. Yeah, so I'll jump in here because Maze, Please I do. think I like I agree with you that the most important element of this matchup is going to be containing their run game. I think that Jason Bean is uh, a talented QB, but he is not near as Brandon. talented as as Jalen Daniels. Um, and so I think if you take away the run game, you're going to make him throw the ball. And I think the more pressure you can get on him, the more you're going to expose this 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 very talented Kansas offense. You know, I mean, they're third in the Big Twelve for a reason. Um, I I don't think we should. I, I want us to try to not be I felt like we were like, you know, not sluggish last week, but with when we'll talk more about that on the offensive side. But I, I think we really, really need to be dominating on the defensive line 
this game especially um we're going to be in their environment and um we cannot let some of those big plays break especially if they're running the ball um i think those are going to be really really key important moments in the game that this defense has to step up on um and i think i think ultimately they will the the defense is not my biggest concern on this game um but i i need them to be able to stop the run make j make god you guys got me thinking is it brandon or jason uh jason bean brandon <laughs> <laughs> throw the Brandon, ball. He says confidently. <laughs> make make Jason Bean throw the ball. Make him beat you, and 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 see what happens. Because I don't think he can. Not not with how talented this defense is. Yeah, the longer the ball is in Jason Bean's hand, the better that I feel. Make him the one who has to beat you, Mark. Yeah, I think the matchup that I want to zero in on is in conference play. Kansas is fourth in rushing yards per game and uh, Oklahoma is fourth in rushing defense per game. And that's sort of the matchup that's going to define it. That's a lot of what you guys are getting into, but I don't, I mean, I think they're talking about Jalen Daniels in this funky way because he's going to play and they don't want to tell us. He's oh going to play. yeah. Ooh, I don't I like the I take. Think, baby. I think Lance Ooh. Leipold is just like, he's, he's going to be some trickery, stuff. questionable, trickery? doubtful. That doesn't mean anything. But what is that? It doesn't. You know what that means? <laughs> means you know what that nothing. means, dog? Active. Yeah. That means active. Yeah. So watch for if he does play, even if he doesn't play, a little bit of RPO game and option play out of the quarterback position and Devin Neal. And then it comes down to Mason. I think you said it, the point of attack, the defensive line, my MVP from last year or from last week, Dejon Terry. And Isaiah Coach, Jonah Laulu, Rondell Bothroyd, Ethan Downs, the young guys, PJ, R. Mason Thomas saying this week he's fully healthy. That's awesome. Hopefully he can get some pass rushing downs at the very least. And then the linebackers. Danny, Jaron. We saw last week Kip Lewis is a permanent part of the rotation, I believe. And uh, it just happens that he's small, man. That's all that it is. I think Oklahoma is going to win that battle. And then it does come down to can Brandon Bean find the same holes in the back of the defense that Texas showed and then UCF exposed. If they can, it's going to be a long day. It it just is, right? Oklahoma in conference play on defense. This one actually surprised me. I had to look for it. We're ninth against the pass because the oh, last good. two games have not gone very well. Yeah. And uh, maybe this is a get right opportunity, even though it's on the road, because it'll be against either quarterback is not exactly the greatest passer. So we'll see, baby. I think the rush is definitely what you need to lock down. And like y'all said, uh, give your pass rushing opportunists a chance to flick the bean around the field. I did Bingo. see that uh, there was an article that just came out that like, it said Oklahoma's defense is basically preparing for both QBs just in case, which is, and that's why my, that's why he's my head coach, but but like they're, they're thinking along the same lines that like, we have to be, we have to be ready for Daniels if that does happen. Um, And I'm sure they will be. Matt game. I did watch some of the Oklahoma state game last week who they lost to 39 to 32, pretty much just like a typical big 12 show or shootout each team getting over 500 plus yards. So not a whole lot of defense, but something that OSU did do was bring quite a bit of pressure. They had four sacks, seven tackles for loss overall. You can't let Jason Bean just sit back there. I think OU's defense will be able to stop the run and David Neal, just like Oklahoma State did. They held him to 13 carries and 66 yards, but Jason Bean still went for 23 of 34 for 410 yards, 12 per pass for five touchdowns. So he has proven that even if the run can't, can't get going, that he's able to find spots in the coverage and in the zones uh, based on what I saw. So can't give him time in the pocket just to sit and pick apart our defense. Because, again, we gave up some pretty big plays to UCF, and if he's got too much time, he'll do the exact same thing. So I want to see how our back end will hold up. They had four receivers, or I guess three receivers, three tight end or one tight end, sorry, who each had – over 60 plus yards. The guy that I'm looking for matchup wise, someone maybe in the back end to cover 
would be Mason Fairchild, who's Kansas's tight end. He is 6'4", 260 pounds, and he can move like a madman. He has some great catches in that Oklahoma State game. He is a menace to deal with. That is a big boy. Again, they do have some speedsters on the outside as well. So I want to see how the back end can recover the corners, the safeties. Can they lock down and uh, keep Jason Bean just from throwing it all over the yard? I don't think the run game is going to be too big of an issue, but I want to see how the back end can hold up in this game. If you're going to give all that attention to the Bean, you got to make sure you give some attention to the backside of the D as well. I, I completely agree. That's 100%. right. percent. Patrick, anything, anything else on the defense, man? No, I think I'm good, baby. Anybody else on the defense before we uh, move on to Oklahoma's offense? Not on the defense, just on you. That was awesome, man. Really, <laughs> really, I was drinking there, but Thanks, that man. was stand-up job. Thank yeah, you for appreciate that. leading us. Yeah, no problem. All right, uh, on to the Oklahoma offense against the Kansas Jayhawk defense. Kansas comes into the game 10th in total defense in the Big 12. They're allowing 396 yards a game. In case you're wondering, Oklahoma down to second in the Big 12. Actually, they stayed second because UCF was first last week as well, I believe. 496 yards a game for the Oklahoma offense. Kansas, rushing defense. They allow 161 yards a game on the ground. And as for passing, the Kansas defense allows 235 yards a game through the air. So that's where we're at for the stats. Patrick, you want to start us off with, with what you're looking for out of this matchup? Yeah, I feel like there's there's question marks again with the offense. There's question marks at the beginning of the season. Now we're midway through. Andrew Anthony is out. The run game didn't get going well last week with Tawi out. It just feels a little sus. And I hope that we really play some complimentary football early in the game and we don't make the sim- silly little trickery happen again this week. We need to capitalize on good field position when we have it, when our defense sets us up. I'm really hoping that we see deep balls from like a Brendan Thompson or something like that. I'm really hoping. uh, Yeah, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to see more deeper balls because we didn't really see that a lot last week. And that is a big part of DG's game. The beans going to go balls deep. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I that's Jesus I Christ. think we need to throw our balls deep, yeah, and continue to do it. And if you if you can't just slam it in the hole on the run game, time after time, then you need to throw your balls deep and see if someone can come down with it. You know, maybe yeah. you maybe you plant a seed that hatches a great offense. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe you I'm do. just I'm really Patrick, great. I'm yeah. really glad. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad I brought it up too. Let's just, gosh, man, who's going to be the running back to take to take the wheel? You know, been asking that for seven weeks. I know, but it's got to yes, happen Ryan, this week. I feel week. like it has to happen this week. Either Talwi learned his lesson; he's going to be number one moving forward, or we're just going to keep going like this the rest of the year. It's this week. I'm calling it. It's got to be this week. You're I, expecting the breakout game. A breakout game from someone. Dominate. Be Who's it gonna one. be? Are you predicting or are you are you predicting or are you begging? Because I'm, I'm begging, begging for just I'm someone. Begging. Yeah, okay. I was about to say because like I don't know who it will be. I don't even know who they're good, who's gonna get the most carries. Tommy Walker's back, but what does that even mean? You know what Kevin I mean? I'll check, I think. Yeah. Is gonna I mean, be number two on that at least. Like I who knows what happened between Tawi and DeMarco, probably yeah. insiders that aren't us, but yeah. Gavin was getting those carries for a reason last week, and by the end he looked all right. So I think they're going to at least give him a little bit of run, see what he can do against this Kansas Hawk or defense that's giving up, like you said, 160 something yards per game. Yeah, on the ground, 100. Uh, he's the only option with burst. We've been saying that all year, and if you can't get him going, you have to really just kind of, yeah, on the run game, you know, do it as you have to. I think this is a game where you have to focus on the run game. You you have no other option. And by no other option, I mean, if you're going to get the run game going, this is the game that you're going to have to do so. Like, you have to do it this game. And I'm, I'm not saying that they won't be able to run the ball later in the season, but if you're going to get right, now's the time to do so. 
Because let me tell you right now, if you plan on just drawing back to pass the entire game, I got some bad news for you. Kansas is second in the conference. They have 19 sacks through seven games. They can go get the quarterback. They can rush the passer. So Dylan Gabriel sitting back there, dropping back to pass, isn't going to be as easy as we want it to be. So you are going to need to be able to run the ball effectively, set up your play action passing game so you can add another element to that passing game that's not just Dylan taking three-step drops, five-step drops, waiting on guys to come back and get him. Because I don't know how the offensive line will hold up. We've seen all this shuffling and all this, and hopefully I think it's probably all settled now, but I did I don't know, man. I just I feel I, like no nope. that right guard spot's not settled. Yeah. To to that point. Uh we're still gonna see, I believe, Caleb Schaefer and Savion Bird just keep on getting chances while Dude, Savion out what Bird had a there. had a rough game. Savion Bird had a rough game. Against Where's UCF? Troy Everett in the picture is my sort of question on that. But I I so just second all of that, but then I also want to throw in the uh, only receiver that seems to have that sort of like built-in chemistry with Dylan is Drake Stoops. Yeah. And mm-hmm. because of the Andrew Anthony loss that we kind of hit on you, me and Patrick after the game on Saturday or Sunday, whenever we talked, but that's sort of the thing that I want to see is like, okay, cool. If there is pressure, who gets open, who can Dylan go to, who could, who's going to make a play, get open, and make another play from there? Uh, Ma- only Ma- Andrell had done that so far. Macan. Macan. Uh, Nick Anderson is a beast, leading the Big 12 awesome. in touchdown catches. He's the only guy that's really the deep threat so far. I mean, Jaleel only had three catches for 23. Drake had seven for 60, but – all really behind the line of scrimmage. A lot of swing passes, which I know is an extension of the run game when we can't pound the rock, so we throw it outside. But I want to see some more like intermediate middle type throws, like getting a slant in behind the linebackers. But again, you can only do that if the run game is good enough. It doesn't need to be you know, super explosive, but you got to be able to bring those linebackers down to respect the, the play or to be able to do the play action to get behind the linebackers. But not enough slants and intermediate throws. It's either a swing pass or something deep to Nick Anderson, which has worked, and he's been the only deep threat that the Sooners have had since Antrell Anthony has gone down. So want Julio to get more involved, want Nick, obviously, to continue to do what he does, which is scoring tutties every single game. I mean, he's just been so dominant at what he's done. He's just been the best receiver so far, I think, uh, playing-wise. And his chemistry with DG. Um I just want it to continue to be a pass first offense. I think OU's identity is passing the ball first, running it when it seems just to pound the rock doesn't make sense. It's too conservative. It just breaks the rhythm of the offense, especially with the fast pace that we have. So I would like to continue to pass first versus run. The run game just isn't there, even with Tywee Walker coming back. I just don't think it's good enough, even though Kansas gave up 200 plus yards. They also gave up 300 plus yards in the passing game to a fairly average quarterback in Alex Bowman at OSU. So uh, I would like to see DG absolutely go for 400 and four tutties in this game. Real fast. Alan Bowman, Matt, <laughs> Alex Bowman and Brandon Bean. Yes. There you go. That's right. How were you like always 85 percent right dude it's amazing i give him tons like of credit you, you know the name like you know who you're talking about there's yeah, no sure. doubt about it <laughs> yeah, sure. Like, yeah sure he doesn't but know because he's, he's an enigma because he's an enigma man he's it's just because uh, my brain is going but the words don't always come out that's why i don't Dear national man of mystery matthew gan dude I love you. I don't know if you. I don't know if you said have, have said Tawee Walker for the entire season. I think you've said Tywee Walker the entire time, and I just don't have the heart to correct you. I just don't. Why? Why but would you? I yeah. I don't banter, know. Banter, baby. Banter. All right, go right. ahead, Ryan. What do you What do you see, brother? <laughs> um, Jesus. Okay. Um, Seven this is a. This is a. Uh, this is a game that is going, in my opinion, is going to come down to the run game. You guys have all talked about it. This is 
that I this disagree. It, this is you you disagree but you're wrong because <laughs> it is it's we saw it happen last week like we saw it with our own eyes what happens when our run game crumbles like we can't have that happen again especially i'm not saying ucf technically statistically has a better offense than kansas does but we're going to be in kansas we're going to be in lawrence like we cannot go in and and do the same thing that we did last week which was essentially like our run game did nothing the first three quarters right we finally got into a groove in the fourth quarter and we looked okay this is much more the team that we expected to come out right this this we have to we have to decide on a running back a running back has to choose to like you know really like take this spot and run with it right like we've been talking about this for seven weeks that no one has you know taken the bull by the horns and actually done anything like demarco murray needs to get his guys in gear and he needs to get one of them at least to actually run the damn ball and like i I know it's not just the running backs. I know part of this is the offensive line and making sure that they are able to get space. But at the same time, we need somebody who is going to, you know, show out like Nick Anderson has shown out this year on wide receiver. You know, like we need someone who's going to do that. And we haven't had it yet. And they need to step up in all honesty. And and, and if we are not able to run the ball on this Kansas team. I, and they are able to run on us, which I've already talked about on the defensive side. I'm worried about how this game is going to come out. So I just, I, I, that is my biggest thing I'm looking toward. And it's not like most of it is because it's a a reaction from last week. Cause I think we really showed a lot of our cards last week on how you beat us. And teams are going to be targeting that. And trying to exploit that as much as they possibly can, because that is what defensive coaches do. And it's you like you have to step up. You have to step up. You're a running back at University of Oklahoma. You have to step up. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. Um, it's particularly out of Sachuk. I want to see how he comes back from that fourth quarter um, and, and see what happens. And if, if Tawi Walker comes in and he has served his suspension and everything is good with him and DeMarco and he plays great, love that too. But we have to get into a rhythm here, especially if if we're thinking, and I don't, I'm not saying we're thinking for the future, but this is the one big like red flag on this Oklahoma offense. And we saw how detrimental it can be to our entire team last week. And we have to be better than that. So... That is what I'm going to be looking for on the offensive side of the ball. That's going to be my main focus. I think I think Dylan's going to be good to great as he's been all year, um, especially if you give him time. And I think I'm I'm not as worried about why our wide receivers. I'm a little bit more worried about them if if we can't run the ball and they start sending their linebackers back. Um, good call. Well, but but that's that's my main focus for this this game. We live and die by the run game. I think on both sides of the ball. Disagree. <clears throat> Anybody else? Anything to add on the offense for? Yeah, move? disagree. <laughs> banter, banter. Here we come. <laughs> have we won? Just anyone, please. Have we won one game because of the run game this year, except for use DG's legs in Texas? That's well, and that's the point that I was about to make. Is DG running the ball is sort of like the yes. X factor we haven't hit on. Is is he able to get back to that Texas success or? Is it more like last week where the defense is able to pretty much stop him near the line of scrimmage every freaking he had a he had a few. Yeah, but 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 nothing like the Texas game. His long was 14 and he had like 20. So it you know, it it wasn't pretty the whole night. So here's the here's the banter that you're looking for, Matt. You just asked the you just asked the entire group that has Oklahoma won a game through the running game this year. And I challenge you to say, do you think Oklahoma can win a game when they really matter at the end of the season without it? Based on the first seven weeks? Yes. I no, we I almost lost to disagree. UCF because they took away our run game. No, you are wrong here, sir. You are I, I wrong. Winning by disagree. defense and the, the offense putting up 
points through the passing game. If our, 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 our defense, our if defense it, can't win the game. Nick if, Anderson if has more touchdowns and than four it. of our running backs combined. If that not, it's not all not about tell touchdowns you though. It's not all about touchdowns. Like, what about, do you mean? You win a football game by scoring no, touchdowns. It's, it's about mean? the pace of a game. It's about controlling the game. It's about right. giving time to your defense to get them off the field. None of I those agree. things we were able to do last week because cool. we didn't have a damn run game. So one thing I will say that was really, really noticeable in the UCF game is third down conversions were atrocious. I think we started off the game like two and nine or just something awful, which leads to your point, Ryan. If we're not converting on that down, the most important down to keep our offense going, we're going to sputter, you know, leaving our defense out to dry. And that's where we give up the big plays on the defensive end. But you can't do that on that big a play. But I agree. The running game hopefully gets you enough to keep you on the positive direction, but it hasn't so far. I think you have to pass first, and the running game hasn't proven to me anything this year other than when DJ uses his legs, which he's going to have to in this game. That's it. The running game, like Mason said, withdrawn. I think that tells you a little bit about what the running game has done so far. Hey, listen, if we had DeMarco Murray back there, sure, and the guy The Rock, but we don't. I'm telling you right now, if this team goes undefeated, wrong. wasn't that about the <laughs> tight end position and you were on the podcast? Yeah. If this team, Look if this team goes undefeated, like we all want them to and expect them to during the regular season and you get to Arlington and you play Texas again, I'm telling you right now, you can't rely on Dylan Gabriel to be your run game and you're going to win the game. You're going to have to have your running backs be in charge and be a difference maker and run for over a hundred yards with your running backs. If you want to win that game, I'm telling you right now, because you no, will not win that game passing first. I agree. I just don't think it's ha- it will happen. We had had DG run for over a hundred yards in Texas to beat them. But so so you're saying we don't, so but you're saying so we don't need our running no, so game. This makes no saying. sense. I, I hope that's what I'm saying now. The offense this is, is not the game. Built on running. This is the game to figure it out. This is the game. We to said get that it last started. week. They allow 160 yards a game. Week. It, it needs UCF, to be UCF allows 200 week. plus this and we barely week. can run on them. You are you are off on a different level someone right else, now. Someone else, man. Go, Patrick, in last, Patrick <laughs> last and Mark, thoughts, final thoughts. Last, last thoughts. Get Drake Stoops going early. No trickery. Just pass slant passes to Drake Stoops early to get the offense going. That's how we get going early. And if I, if I see another penalty from Tyler Guyton, I don't even know if he has a lot, but Every time I look up and there's a penalty on the offensive line, for some reason it's Tyler Guy. I swear to God, if it happens again, I'll be mad. I'll be real like mad that. this time. I and love Patrick more. being like, I swear to God, if Tyler Guy can get another penalty, I don't actually know how many penalties he has, but I swear to God, if he gets one. <laughs> no, but as long as you feel, as long as you <laughs> feel it, them, though, as long I as just, you feel uh, it, it's real. All right, Mark. yeah, it's real. Yeah, not not a ton left for me. Just it would be really nice to see someone really break through in that running back room. All of the coaches have said it during press availability stuff that they would like to have a one guy be kind of the guy and just take over. It seems like the players who are going to get the chances are still going to be Tawi and Gavin Tawchuk, but to my own point several weeks in a row now, give me Jaleel Farouk, give me Caleb Hicks, give me Dalen's mothers and... I'll be happy just if we're willing to try some cool stuff because it represents an understanding that you're going to need more of a running game than we've had in the past to have that postseason success. Like you're saying, Mason, you can't count on five foot 11, 200 pound Dylan Gabriel to be your running game in addition to your passing game. So that's kind of my final thing. I don't know that it, as, it is as much applicable to this game as the entire year moving forward, but sort of my final thoughts on that. I really agree with you, Mark. Cool. Before, Matt, before, so we, before we get to our picks, I have some uh, some breaking news, and it's that uh, this is from Nick Wagner of the Kansas City Star. He reports on the Jayhawks for the Kansas City Star, and he said prior to the game, it's going to be rainy and cold, 45 degrees and rainy. Uh, So Jason Bean's going to be inside of the practice facility warming up before he goes out out on the field because it's very important to get the bean warmed up before it gets wet. Gosh, (laughs) we're getting kicked off YouTube. (laughs) 
<laughs> we're getting kicked off. <laughs> Sign, seal, delivered. We're out. It was, was boys. Had to, uh, Mason, it you was were nice. like ready for that. I was so like, ready. That's... I had to look up a real reporter just to make sure <laughs> that it could go off without a hitch before you guys were like, that doesn't sound right. Okay. Wow. Is, right. actually is, truly, hey, is, is it truly going to be like raining and cold? Yeah, it's going to be raining and cold. 100% sucks. Run game, maybe. Yeah. Pass the football. If it's raining and cold, that's run game. You got to lean not... on the run. Oh, that's not uh, good. No, that's not do good. Think, <laughs> do y'all think Dylan is going to... Do y'all think Dylan is going to warm up somewhere separate from the rest of the team? Because I think I it's... Think, I, I, look, think Mason I, think was, it represents... I think Mason was kidding. With I that, literally made that up. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Oh, that was oh. completely made oh. up. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That Just was completely... the weather is the real thing. The weather's <laughs> real. The, 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 Mason, the, got Jason, Mark good. The Jason Bean. Mason, that was incredible. <laughs> Thanks. Dude, that Thanks. was so good. I appreciate Thank that. Hey, the weather's gotta, accurate. The weather's accurate. We got to yeah. win in the trenches then. Yeah. It's okay. Trench. Well, Patrick, we're we'll, we'll start with you. Give me your prediction, man. Prediction for the game. Well, it's tough because we don't have a kicking game anymore. And now I know the weather. Give me. I'll, I'll say we'll make a field goal. Not two. That's too much to ask for. 31. 31-20. 31-20 for Patrick. 31-20 for Patrick. Write it down. That's his prediction. Matt Gann. Uh, I mean, the news is new to me, so I think that's going to change my prediction. If it's going to be rainy and cold the entire game, I think it's probably going to be a lower-scoring game. And I think it's probably going to be closer than what we want because I was, I think we were totally off last week. With the UCF game, I think this team will be more prepared. The spread is OU plus 10 points. Uh, I'm going to go minus. 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 You're right. <laughs> all right. Keep going. OU You're on a roll. You're yep. on a roll. Yep. I'm on a roll. Love you. Love you all. Uh, I'm going to go 35-30. I think it's going to be a close one. 35-30 for Matt Gann. Mark, what do you got? Matt, you were looking. It's so funny because you just said the spread. So I know you're looking at the line and the total on the game, guys, is 65. So where do you think Matt got 35, 30? I love from? that. I love anyway, that. I love that. It's called uh, being resourceful. I mean, look it up in a book. You're great. <laughs> so you do have Kansas covering that because you have a, yeah, he you has them the defense giving up 30 points in the wet, cold rain. Correct. I'm going to go a different route. Um. I'm not really sure that I have a lot of faith in the Oklahoma offense to perform in those conditions. So give me 30 to 17 Oklahoma. Massive to... under Oklahoma still covers. Ryan. Yeah, mine's going to be really close to Mark's. It's 28-17. 28-17? Yep. No field goal. I, okay. I don't think we'll get a field goal. I have that kicking team. I have 34 to 17 Oklahoma, and it's not from what you think. We're not going to make two field goals because I can't trust Zach Schmidt as far as I can throw him or as far as he can kick. So he's actually going to miss an extra point, and it's going to be 34 to 17 Oklahoma. They win because Zach Schmidt can't hit a freaking extra point. I'm so done with, with Zach Schmidt. I'm over it. I can't do it anymore. He's, like there's got to be someone better if there's we just think, hey, if we think he's bad in like great weather imagine him when it's raining maybe matt, he'll be you better were, matt you were in the stadium <laughs> was it windy on saturday at all uh slight breeze but nothing okay. that would make a huge significant impact not I mean, anything that would make just... him miss a 30 something yarder no got it okay yeah cool freaking bum absolute bum he was like the OU, one of the OU player athlete, student athletes of the week this week. And man, they're wow. doing everything they can to massage that guy's ego. Oh, I know. You see Brent and we, and being we like, talked I to... have the, all the confidence in the yeah. world in him. Yeah, we talked about that in the post game pod. Like, what is he Ryan supposed to do, Ryan didn't listen right? to the post game. That's no, he how did. I know. No, Ryan did. It, it's just like. No, he didn't. Look at his face. Oh, no, he damn. didn't. He, he hurt me. Okay. So <laughs> now that's. Now that's all settled. Okay. Tune into the KU game, folks. We'll have a post game pod for you coming up after the after the game, whether that be on Saturday afternoon or Sunday evening or Sunday morning. 
be on the lookout for that. We'll have that for you as well as a program roundup on uh, Sunday or Monday. You could check for that as well. Okay. Anyone want to dive into the Jim Harbaugh Michigan news? Because I'm not up to the absolute date on this. So anyone else want to dive in on this? I feel like it's like updating every like couple hours and I am not up to date either. So, so this is what I'm confused about. Matt rule doesn't seem to care. Deion Sanders doesn't seem to care. Uh, I thought there was another bigger name coach that I mean, came Georgia, out. Georgia, but Georgia whooped their ass. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That was the thing. That was, was like, the Kirby was Smart like, quote. And then Bob came out today, Bob Stoops, and was Bob, like, Yeah, Bob, no was... one does this and this sucks. Don't do it. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Bob was on his radio, his weekly radio appearance on The Ref today. Oh, wow. Um, so Brent Venables adjusting within two seconds and then getting a sack is real. I don't know. What? what? what Are you, you saying that BV no, was no, I'm just, signs? No, no, I'm not. I'm just saying that Bob has confirmed that we are not doing this in Brent. Oh, Venables. that we're, oh, that we're not doing it. That is natural. Yes, that's yeah, natural. Na- we Got are it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're, it. we're built like that. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're built yeah. like that. Okay. We're built different. Yeah. yeah I mean, I don't, I don't know... I don't know. Like I'll, we'll, I'll withhold because I don't really know all of the details about it. So anyone else want to jump in who has a stronger opinion about it than me? Feel free. Mark. Yeah. Have y'all, I mean, we have to talk about the Michigan manifesto, right? It's so funny. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. That's, so, that's weird, man. I'll summarize as best I can. It is a like 550 to 600 page. And I don't yeah. know why that like, shouldn't, you know, yeah. but that manifesto as it's called that this guy connor stallions kept with two lower level assistants at other programs dudes at other schools oh i didn't where... know it was other schools yeah, yeah. dudes that weren't oh there. okay Collusion. Yeah. Collusion. found out found out today stallions is 28 so he's about our age wow. and has been writing a 550 to 600 page manifesto about he and his buddies taking over the Michigan program. Wait, it is a on. good thing we got to this guy <laughs> before he took a gun into the facility dude, because I, that dude, dude is not going to end I, well. I have questions about the fact that does this – is this something that we would do? Yes, <laughs> that's exactly what I was about to say. We would need we to get have, together on Sunday. Would we have a 500 a page Google Doc that's just like this is how it needs to go <laughs> in the future? Oh, Look, I'm not. I'm not convinced Matt's not doing it about <laughs> about like taking over the coaching staff though. No, have any I, misconceptions no. here? Listen, now, Mason's like, hey, <laughs> I think I think Patrick <laughs> might have some ideas. Honestly. The dude's, the dude's passionate. Right and after, a, right after he's he's done playing in the World Series outfielder, right, Pat? Is this yeah, your next? Yeah, that's gonna get there. <laughs> I just, guys, if we had, if I had a manifesto, there's no way that leaks that I have a manifesto. Like, who? How is this guy not hiding this stuff? He was just everything he does is public information. I they guess they shared it, so it has to be on like a Google Drive, right? I think it's a Google Doc. Has the I word? Think it's what I, has the word manifesto ever been used in like ever a positive good. connotation? No. Like no. never, Frank right? Mason. No. <laughs> right. Always Carl, Carl Marx stuff wonderful. going on. <laughs> it's all been bad. Matt, you're I think it's quiet. actually way worse than Karl Marx. But... Yes. <laughs> so it's like... it's Matt, you're awfully call. quiet. You're probably like, yeah. this Connor guy's on to something. Yeah, I just think based on what I've seen, it's been going on for a couple of years now, and there's blatant photos of a laminated card of hand signals i don't know what more could be damning with that kind of photo evidence and who knows what else did they have so i definitely think this is sort of similar to what happened i wouldn't go all the way to what happened to smu back when that happened to them with the death penalty but i do see some postseason bans i mean what this is deliberate cheating and you can go to games you can't film and and do all this i mean you can't go to games Advanced Can't scouting games was at all. banned okay. decades ago. Yeah, gotcha. so that's even the crazy. Thing. All of it. So I bad. think. So I think Jim Jim Harbaugh's gone. 
And I think there's some postseason bans coming and possibly a, an exodus. If it's as bad as all the photos and evidence that they have, I can't see any other. There's no way that Michigan gets a slap on the wrist for this. This is way, way too much, way too far. Um, I don't see any good coming out of this. No. A lot of bad things, I think, come from Michigan. Do you think the NCAA does anything in season to stop their national championship run? I think the Big Ten they might. could. I don't know. See, so it it would depend. They would have to for the NCAA to do anything. They would have to like conclude an investigation. Right. In my opinion, now how quickly does that get done? Knowing the NCAA, not very quickly. Good to, good so, yeah. like, as of this year, I don't think it'll be anything. But by that point, Jim Harbaugh will already be on his way back to the NFL, and it's not his problem anymore because that's the kind of dude he is. That's just what's going to happen. Well, well, he's just not going to wait around. And I think no. that that whole team probably knows it, but they probably also know they're going to get this year to play it out. Unless someone comes in and really drops a hammer with a postseason ban this season, or like I think it was Matt who said the Big Ten could step in. They're mm. they're certainly, you know, they can do whatever they want. Yeah, it's their confidence. They have, they have the and, right to step in. Yep. And 10 of 13 – other schools have evidence of this dude at their location. So that's not great. I kind of think the Michigan Wolverines sort of rally around this and play even better because I know it's sort of a last hurrah for Jim yeah. Harbaugh on the staff before something happens. I, I don't see him staying past this. No. I Let us know down below in the comments what you think about it. Go ahead, Ryan. Last last point. The one below. last point. I I think the Big Ten has to do something. I don't I don't think the NCAA will do anything until next year. Probably, I think the Big Ten has to do something this year, and I I think they probably will because I think that they have another contender in Ohio State. So that like I I don't think they're as you know Michigan might be the better team, but they're not saying here like if we tank Michigan right now. Like we're screwed because they're not. They have Ohio State, and um, I like. I just think if it if if ten other schools in that conference have evidence of this, and we have evidence that he has bought tickets and given them to other people across the country to go do this, and they have evidence of people videoing, like if I was part of the Big Ten, I'd be like, absolutely not. You cannot let this team continue to just like even be on the same field as some of the other people. Now that won't happen, but like there has to be something done, I would think. And if, and if there's not, I don't know. I'm not sure. That's, that's a, that's a weird, weird area to be in. Um, But I think like, I think the big 10 will do something. I just, that's my gut instinct. Yep. All right. Should be uh, interesting development. Tune into the program roundup. We'll probably get to this on Sunday with as new information just comes in hourly about this developing story. All right, boys, PGP MVP of the week time. Patrick, whoa, we'll whoa, 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 whoa. Are you circling the wagons? I can circle. Are we, them are we circling? Allow. Are we? Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, quickly. Oh, we're going to circle. Add it That's right. The outline. All right, go ahead. That's right. Let like, me circle because we I, I didn't recording. get to it last week. Uh, so let me get to it real quick. Soccer. Overall, 7-9-2, and two, currently on a two-game losing streak. They did beat Texas at John Crane Field, a loss back-to-back games to BYU on senior night, 2 nothing, and the Oklahoma State Cowgirls, 1-0 on the final game of the regular season. They are heading to the Big 12 tourney this weekend in Round Rock, Texas, maybe get some boots on the ground. I have no idea where Round Rock is. It sounds far, but OU women Outside will Austin. be the 10th. Perfect. We're heading down there. They will be the 10th seed heading in, and we'll actually get a rematch with a first game against the number seven Cowgirls. So hopefully they can get revenge and continue on into the tournament. Volleyball overall, 8-11. and 11. They're 1-8 and eight currently in conference play. Recently losing to TCU, 3-2. to two. Go Horn Frogs. Loss to Kansas, 3-0. Our first game, uh, first game to Kansas State, they won before falling in the second rebound game. Three to nothing. Uh, ended up being Tulsa, and we'll play Iowa State this weekend. Golf will play in Hawaii this upcoming weekend as well. Men and women's basketball will be starting a little under two weeks from today. So some more programs starting this upcoming fall. Baseball also getting underway with the upcoming exhibitions against a couple teams this weekend, and they will get their season started as well. 
plenty of excitement, especially with some more programs coming up. That is a quick Circle of Wagon segment. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate that. Patrick, PGP MVP, MVP of the week, brother. That, that would be Dusty Baker for me, who announced he is retiring <laughs> as head coach of the Astros. Yeah, he I can't laugh. did an amazing job. I think the entire baseball world really loves Dusty Baker and hates the Astros, but was able to still like Dusty Baker. Wish yep. him the best. Thank you so much for coming in and fixing the mess and bringing us to two World Series and winning one of them. Dusty Shout Baker. out, Dusty. Shout, Shout out, out, Dusty. Go ahead, Matt. Who's your MVP? Here it comes. Uh, this, <laughs> think you guys all know <laughs> where this is going. I mean, come on. I'm about to do a Mason style rant. It is not. It's his girlfriend. <laughs> this is quote for you, Mason. This is for you. Okay. Oh, it's God. the Texas Rangers. It's the only MVP this week. Let me give you some stats. The last two years, Texas Rangers have lost 92 in 104 games. They brought on Bruce Bruce. Bruce Bochi to lead this team back. They signed some pitchers, signed some offseason with Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager. This team, on the last day of the regular season, lost to the Seattle Manders, Mariners, lost the division on that same day. They had to travel to St. Petersburg to play in the wild card against a 90-win team in the Rays. Sweeps them. They have to go play the number one team in the AL and the Baltimore Orioles that won over a hundred games this year. Huh, let me guess. Sweep. They go on to the LA, the CS against Houston. Everyone's like, oh, the dynasty, it's still here. Dusty Baker, Alfuve, all these guys. Patrick doesn't even know who the first baseman is because I had to tell him who it was. This team doesn't even win a home game in the championship series. They lose game five to an Altuve home run in the ninth inning. You know what this team does? They go two games in a row in Houston. They go into your home, Patrick, into your home, Mark. Win two straight games. Mark. This team is undefeated. Like, like <laughs> they this love is the like, MVP. Also, I live in Dallas. <laughs> the Texas going. Rangers, what a historic season they're having. Onto the champ series and the world series against the Diamondbacks. They got home field advantage. Game one, Friday. MVP. I got to be honest. Uh, a lot of people I work with, obviously, like Ryan said, I live in Dallas and uh, a lot of Rangers fans and kind of like not fun about it. So, I mean, not like abrasive, but like, are y'all wearing your jerseys around it's been here? A, it's been a, I'm not been doing really, that when OU really is 7 time. and 0. It's been, been a long time since 2011. No, it hasn't. It's been like, what, 10 years? 13, 13 years? 12 years? 12. That's not like actually a really long time. Like in real life years? stuff, that's not. That is not. When was the last it's time? Almost the half Mets, my life, man. When was the last time the Mets were in the the World Series? Anyone? Who cares Anyone? about the Mets? I don't. Well, I'm just saying, like, oh, you hasn't won time? a national okay. championship cool. since 2000. I mean, what else do you want to just throw out? A lot of teams, teams would say that's not a long time. That's the what Braves. I'm like the Braves just that's won a World Series. The Astros. Oh no doubt, and I'm not saying it's like years. I'm not suggesting myself as a as the yeah. example here. I'm just saying. Rangers fans have had some success. Love that. Ryan, who's your MVP? My MVP is um, Kirk Cousins, who I love it. (laughs) That was so obvious. Absolutely hate slash love all at the same time. I don't know how it's possible. Um, But the the dude went... um, he oh, what were his I just had his stats pulled up, guys. I'm sorry, but he had an incredible game versus uh, San Francisco this past Monday um, where they ended up winning. Um, and he did it all without his uh, the best player, um, the best wide receiver in in um, professional football, Justin Jefferson. So um, I think that he takes a lot of shit from me included and Everyone gives him shit about primetime Kirk. And let me tell you, the stats aren't great. He pulled it off this primetime, though. He pulled it off. He played great. Um, That team won. I don't know who that team is, what their identity is. I have no clue, but I'm just like along for the ride. Um, Because other than these past two games, I thought San Francisco was the best team in the NFL. 
yeah. and then they've dropped two in a row. And now, you know, I didn't think we stood a chance in hell in winning that game. So here we are. You know, I'm just along for the ride. We'll see where it goes. Cool. So my MVP, Kirk Cousins. Nice. Uh, I'll wrap us up in my MVP. Uh, Matt, since you did an impression of me, I'm going to do an impression of you if you don't mind. So oh my, my MVP of the week is Freddie Prince. Eddie Prince. Happy birthday, Eddie Prince. Uh, it is his birthday this weekend. <laughs> get it? Because you get names wrong all the time. I thought so, you were saying like, uh, Junior. So happy birthday to my father, <laughs> program guy. Program guy. He uh, bought the shirt. Send me a picture. Proud rocking it. Shout out to my guy, Eddie. Watch football. We love, we love Watch you, football Eddie. At his, at his house every weekend. He cooks his family great meals every Sunday. He's the man. Shout out to my father. Happy birthday. 62 years young. What a guy. What a guy. I haven't gone yet. Oh, my God. I thought you did. My bad. Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> no, that's okay. It's no problem at all. I'd love to round us out. My yes. MVP is going to be the NBA season, man. It's oh, back. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. It's really yeah. exciting. Oh, I'm going to be so uh, I think obnoxious. all of our teams are slated to play either you know, today or within the next few days. And that's not really something we get into a ton on here anymore, but let us know when you want the program yeah. starting five podcast. And Dude. we will get that thing started too. Okay. So it's actually a great it. name. Yeah. It's actually I know, a great it's name. Really it's actually around. a great name. I'd love to talk gonna... basketball. Yeah. Patrick, rank your top five, Patrick, rank your top five NBA players quick before we get out. Uh, I think we'll have, it's, it's actually a longer list than five. We don't have enough it's time. Okay. Oh, Let's do, okay. Hey, Pat, that's fine. Let's do all time. Top five. There Dirk Nervinsky. Okay. Cool. Is that one? Are you going in order? Is that one? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. One. Okay. Did you say Nervinsky? Yao Ming. <laughs> Yao Ming. Dead left shrimp. Uh, who was the guy who played with Yao at the Rockets? The Cause guy? that's my Isaac other Grady? Tracy uh, T-Mac. Dennis Schroeder. AKA. Um, that's really all I got from a favorite perspective because I'm like I no I'm we picky. said top five I'm picky okay let's, give me two more we, just two um, more come on, that one just, guy's name I really I really like this that that one guy on the Celtics I really did like him Jason Tatum Larry Bird no no Larry Larry Bird just Larry <laughs> style of play is really good so what was this what was his style Patrick can you explain so it. Larry um, Bird. <laughs> it was just I really I, it was kind of dirty, but it was really yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. And then Gosh. I'm gonna go with Shaq as my number five. Dude, amazing! You, you literally <laughs> had Trevor. Kobe Bryant, Trevor, if LeBron you made it, James, James, Trevor, if you Kevin made Durant, it this far, had... Trevor, if you made it this far, I need you to make me a social media graphic <laughs> with Patrick's top five NBA players. And, and please get, put, and please put for out. Tracy McGrady that oh, one yeah. dude who played with Yao Ming. Yeah. Just that's the yeah, answer. Parentheses, yeah. Tracy McGrady. <laughs> oh, oh, I forgot Steve Blake. There that's you go. Steve yes. Blake. Yes. Honorable yes. mention, yes. Steve Blake. How could we right, forget? Let's wrap this up. Hey, let's wrap Trevor. this up. Trevor, All please. Right. Hey, Be sure, Matt, please. you're such a hater. Uh, <laughs> sophomore year, I got Patrick a Steve Blake jersey because right. he would play 2K and sit Damian Lillard, not move him to the shooting guard position. He would sit, sit his ass for Steve Blake and Amazing. then would proceed to cook us. So Amazing. Steve Blake. So just, uh, since we have, well, since we're talking about NBA, and I swear, oh, there we go. Saying, no, 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 not doing the Wimby. No, thing. no, no we're not doing the Wimby anyway, thing. I'm not even going to talk about the Spurs. I'm not, I'm, I'm, okay, go, go, go. I'm, go, I'm go, not quit. even talking about the Spurs. Matt Gann, yeah. is your team the Oklahoma City Thunder? Or is your is your team changed to uh, oh, great, Mavs? Great question. No, it's it's the Thunder. Absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. Okay. Good to know. The Thunder have a chance to make the playoffs this year. Of course, it's the Thunder. They made. Love they that. made the play in last year. Yeah, the Rockets have a chance to make the play in this year too. Okay, go ahead and like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. <laughs> trying to hit two thousand subscribers. Trying to hit two thousand subs. You can follow us on all of our social media at Program Guys with a Z. Our Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all that stuff. ProgramGuys.com. All of that stuff. We will see you this weekend. Boomer Sooner, Oklahoma against Kansas, eleven a.m. in Lawrence. We'll see you after the game. Pat, take us out. Keep pushing it, baby. Oh, 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 oh,